I apologize for the visual and audio quality for this video. I'm up here on vacation in the mountains right now, and the only quiet place I could find to record was right here in my forerunner. We got a lot of construction going on outside. We got two barking dogs inside the house and two women trying to get ready for the day. So this is the only place I could record. Can't film in HD. I thought I was going to have enough room in my forerunner for all of my studio equipment, but Let's just say uh, with a woman and a teenage girl, there wasn't enough room in the back of the Forerunner for me to pack all my stuff. So last week, someone sent me this interview with Bamani Jones from The Ringer, and I saved this story specifically for my vacation this week because this week I knew I would be feeling like a winner. Hell, I always feel like a winner, but you know how when you're on vacation, you feel even better about yourself, better than usual? I've got this beautiful view of the Smoky Mountains in front of me, healthy family, a healthy mid-sized YouTube channel where even on a down month like we're having this month in December, still provides enough for me financially, more than enough actually, and I have you guys to thank for that. Life is good. I've got no complaints here. In my eyes, I am living the life that I want to live. Or as Charlie Sheen would say, that is the definition of winning. We all have different definitions of winning. For example, young women aspiring to be men, their definition of success could be making it to the WNBA. Success for prepubescent boys could be becoming the next Megan Rapino. Perhaps you have a niece aspiring to be a Yenta. Success and winning for her would be getting used to the smell of fresh flatulence and joining the view. The point is, we all have different definitions of winning, but they all have one thing in common success. In all the scenarios I just outlined, success was achieved in one way or another, which is why I was incredibly confused last week when someone sent me this interview from The Ringer with Bamani Jones. They conducted an interview with the Bobo, and I really don't know why. How in the hell is the Bobo associated with sports or pop culture, which is what The Ringer's all about? He's in the business of mythical racism. A more appropriate platform for this interview would be Ebony Magazine, or perhaps an interview with the matriarch of mythical racism, Jamel Hill. Now, I understood completely why Bamani Jones agreed to this interview. I mean, this dude's never met a camera or a microphone that he didn't fall in love with. He accepts all the free promotion that he can get, and yet, somehow, he's still a huge embarrassing failure. I don't understand this interview from The Ringer's perspective. When you're interviewing someone, you want someone that your audience cares about, someone that's going to bring additional viewers to your platform. <laughs> I mean, no one gives a fuck about Bamani Jones, and he can't bring viewers to his own platform. But during the interview, the obvious topic was mentioned. This topic will always be mentioned in any discussion of Bamani Jones. How does it feel to have never obtained success? How does it feel to be the originator of the term huge embarrassing failure? Let me illustrate how big of a loser this dude is. This channel coined a term, designed an award show tailored for Bamani Jones to win. For the first time in his life, Bobo was going to achieve success. He was finally going to win at something. This dude is such a failure, he found a way to lose an award that was created for him to win. It doesn't get more pathetic than that, but that's okay. That's okay. According to Bamani Jones, he's not a loser. He's not a huge embarrassing failure. No, 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 no. According to the Bobo, He's a winner. He is the definition of success. All of my failures went as planned on my end. I'm so tired of soothing my bruised caboose because people think I'm a failure. I'm a winner, damn it. For two years, my peers were John Oliver and Bill Maher. I worked at the Worldwide Leader and Woke for over a decade. I had the best show on two major networks. Plus, I'm rich, bitch. You know, it must be nice to be a delusional dumbass. For starters, Bill Maher, John Oliver, that was never your peers. Using the term peer, that would imply that you were on their level, you were their equal. <laughs> Unfortunately for the Bobo, you're not even close. Yes, your show had high production values. The problem was it lacked substance. Here on the channel, we call it the polished turd. And second, Bamani Jones does have peers, but... 
They're not John Oliver and Bill Maher. But Monty Jones belongs in the same class as the Dump Divers in the WNBA, Disney, Jamel Hill, and the new face of huge embarrassing failure, our fearless leader, Johnny B. Biden. Now, I'm not going to sit here again and explain the decades of failure with Bamani Jones. You guys are probably tired of hearing about it. I'm damn sure tired of talking about it. But I do want to address this notion that Bamani Jones is successful because he's wealthy financially. In most cases, I would agree with that point. Whether you love him or hate him, you can't argue the fact that Shannon Sharp is very successful. Hey, it's me, Shay Shay. I'll be honest with you. I have been impressed with the grown man who calls himself Shay Shay. I enjoy his YouTube channel that he does with Chad Johnson. I don't watch First Take regularly on ESPN, but I do monitor their ratings every week. Shay, he has increased the audience of First Take by two, 300,000 viewers. Now, based on numbers alone, both on TV and YouTube, Shannon Sharp is a bigger draw than Stephen A. Smith. It's one of those rare cases where the beneficiary has become a bigger star than the benefactor. After his nasty public divorce with Skip Bayless, it was entirely possible that Shay Shay would disappear from the mainstream media. Instead, brother love Stephen A. Smith, he pushed executives at ESPN to hire him. And now, Shay has become a bigger star than A. I can't make a case against the success of Shannon Sharp. Why? It's not because he's rich, it's because he earned it. Shea Sharp is worth every dollar that ESPN is paying him. When it comes to Bamani Jones, the exact opposite is true. Bobo's not wealthy because of hard work. Bobo's not rich because he built a successful platform that draws millions of viewers every month. Bamani Jones is the beneficiary of charity money. Bobo found a way to exploit the system, painted himself as the ultimate victim, collected millions of dollars in woke welfare. During this interview with The Ringer, Bamani Jones said, I am not a victim because I am a winner. True winners, they manage to find success outside of the media. True winners are able to build their platforms without the benefit of billion-dollar corporations promoting them. Tucker Carlson, for example, leaves Fox News, builds a platform on Twitter, starts his own media company. Glenn Beck left Fox News, started The Blaze. Shannon Sharp owns Club Shay Shay, which has 1.7 million lonely men following the channel. His channel with Chad Johnson almost... Half a million subscribers in three or four months? That is success. The losers, on the other hand, they're the ones who were given the benefit of free media promotion, yet for some reason, still can't build a following. Jamel Hill. Jamel Hill tried to build a channel here on YouTube. End result, huge embarrassing failure. She eventually quit. Over the past few years, Dan Lebetard has tried to build a following here on YouTube. He averages about 10,000 views a video, which... I mean, that's okay, it's pretty good, but when you consider the fact that Dan Levitard was a part of the mainstream media for decades, his platform should be exponentially larger. Which leads us to Bamani Jones. After ESPN eliminated his woke welfare, they generously allowed the Bobo to keep his podcast. Hell, I mean, ESPN, they weren't doing anything with it either way. They were uploading this dump on their YouTube channel, which has 10 million subscribers. Somehow, Bamani Jones still couldn't draw an audience. Without the backing of ESPN, the Bobo, he had to create his own YouTube channel. He kept the same appropriate title, Right Time to Be a Failure. With over a decade in the mainstream media, along with the endless free promotion that he gets from his pretend friends in the media, Bamani Jones, 19,000 subscribers. He averages 5,000 views a video. Now, just for comparison purposes, this dumbass you're watching right now in the back of his forerunner who is sitting outside in 21 degree weather on a Forerunner in the Smoky Mountains, this dumbass started from nothing. I've never worked for major media, never asked for promotion. Only promotion this channel receives is from the good people that watch it. To me, the best promotion you can get is from your own audience. This channel right here, this dumbass, averages 30,000 views a video. Now, we are having a down month this month, which is typical for December, but even on a down month, this audience is four times larger than the audience of Imani Jones. Now, sure, he's got the larger bank account. Good for him. 
I will never begrudge another man for making money, or in the case of Bamani Jones, accepting charity money. That's just not my style. I don't ask for handouts, never have, never will. But if that's what Bamani Jones has to do to survive, more power to him. And if he wants to call himself a winner in the process to make himself feel better, go right ahead. Maintaining a healthy self-esteem is important, even if it's based on a myth. I have no problem with Bamani Jones claiming to be a winner because... Everyone else knows the truth. Even though John Biden won the Heff Awards, there's one thing that no one will ever be able to take away from Bonnie Jones. He will always, he will always be credited as the originator of the huge embarrassing failure. Speaking of the Heff Awards, I wanted to take a second here to thank you guys for making the inaugural or first annual huge embarrassing failure awards a huge success. I'll be honest with you. I had serious, serious doubts while making that video over the weekend. For starters, I had never produced anything like that before. I had no idea what the hell I was doing. My main concern, though, was a lack of interest from you guys. It took me five or six hours just to produce the video. If you add in all the time it took going through the nomination, setting up the poll, we're talking seven, maybe eight hours that it took to put everything together. Now, I didn't mind doing it. I looked at it as an audience appreciation type of thing. I did that video for subscribers only thinking maybe three, four, maybe 5,000 people would watch it. Last I checked, the video for the Hef Awards was almost at 15,000 views. Obviously, there is enough interest to keep this thing going. We will be doing it again next year, same time next year, and I'm going to expand the categories. Maybe we'll have separate categories for sports, politics, male, female. Who knows? Who knows? What I do know we're definitely going to do it again next year. Thank you guys for making it a big success. I don't know when I'm going to be back this week. I'm hoping to be back tomorrow, but we got a busy day today. We'll see what happens. In the meantime, give me your thoughts on Bamani Jones calling himself a winner. What is your definition of winning? What is your definition of success? In the case of Bamani Jones, he was handed multiple opportunities at ESPN and HBO based on his marginalized status. That made him a rich man, but is that success? Is that winning? Or is that still huge embarrassing failure? You let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. I appreciate your support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys soon.